Hello everyone. So today we will see a very simple but a very interesting analysis. So these are seven circuits in front of you. You need to find the order of the all the circuit with respect to the given output. Like in first question, voltage output is given. Second, voltage output is given. Third, current output. Output. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Okay. Just don't skip the video. I I know many of you will think that this is a very simple problem, but there is something interesting. Okay. So just hold on to the video. So let's solve the first problem. So how do you actually find the order of a circuit? What do you do? To any storing element, you give a independent voltage. Let's just assume I am telling that V C one is V one. I am giving an independent voltage to V C one. So this is this I am telling V one. So can I write the potential of C two and C three in terms of V one and V in? V in V in is also independent voltage. That let's just assume it is V. So this is also independent voltage because it will be some five volt, six volt, two volt, three volt. So it it is also independent voltage. Now I am giving from my side V one voltage to C one. Now can I write the potential of V C two and V C three in terms of V one and V in? For now I can't write. I have to give some independent voltage to V C two as well. So let's just assume I am giving V two voltage. So V C two is V two. Now you can write V C three in terms of V one and V two, right? So this is V1 minus V2. VC3 is V1 minus V2. So these are independent voltage. Independent voltage. Independent voltage. And this is dependent voltage. Right? This is depending on the voltage of VC1 and VC2. So only two storing element are there. Effective two storing element are there. Effective, I should have written effective two storing element are there, so it would be a second order circuit, right? Effective two storing elements. So it says second order circuit, right? Like you can take any other example as well. Let's just assume this circuit is there. This simple circuit. Where you apply V in here, and this is your V not. C C one you can say, C two you can say. So if you give V one voltage to this capacitor C one, what will be the V C two voltage or V not voltage? That would be V in minus V one. This is also independent. This is also independent. So only one voltage you had to give, and that was V one. So this was first order circuit. Are you getting my point? You only had to give one independent voltage to a storing element. That is V one, and Uh, by giving V1 voltage to this capacitor, you could have written the voltage of capacitor C2 in terms of V in and V1 only. So now you can say that this this is first order circuit and this is second order circuit. Okay. So this was the first question. Let's come to the second question. Okay, I just solved the question here only. So what about this? This is a first order circuit. Okay, let me copy it. So this is the first order circuit. Why so? If I am giving V1 voltage to this. V C one is V one, okay. That is independent, and V C two would be V in minus V one. That is dependent. So only one storing element. That means it is first order circuit. First order circuit. Okay. Let's move on to the third example. It is the same, but at output you are collecting I note. Now your output is changed. This is your output, right? Now, what did you understand? For voltage, for V note, it was first order. It was first order circuit. Okay. So basically, your V note S by V in S would have been first order circuit. So there would be only one pole, right? S P one plus one, something like this. 
there would be only one pole a dc gain would be there there can be a zero at a finite value and there can be a zero at infinity as well you don't really know but if you see the circuit there would be zero at minus one by rc uh, but now not solving the circuit i just assume there would be one zero okay at some finite value there would be some zero okay this is v naught as y v in s or you can write v naught s equal into like this you can write right so v naught s is equals to a into something and v in s this this is the way now what will be your i naught s i naught s will simply be 1 by c s into v in s right oh sorry 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 not 1 by c s c d c by d t it is so c s into v in s so in case of capacitor the current is adding up as zero at omega equals to zero not a pole what did i say in case of a capacitor the current is adding up as zero at omega equals to zero not a pole so in case of capacitor in case of capacitor the currents the current adds up a zero at omega equals to omega z equals to zero not a pole and that's why the order remains the same the order remains the same as voltage output basically what would be your i naught s i naught s by v in s what would be your i naught s by v in s that would have been a into c s s z c1 upon s p1 plus 1 okay so in case of capacitor so in case of capacitor when we say that uh, the order of the order of the circuit is first order first thing is that this statement is wrong because order is always defined with respect to the output okay so if you are collecting the output at c2 your order of the circuit is first order even if you are collecting the voltage the order is first even if you are collecting the current the order is always first why so because it is adding up a zero not a pole but in case of inductor it will change okay so this thing you understood and the second thing is that let's just assume just let's just forget about this circuit just think anything let's just think about something else let's just assume in case of a capacitive circuit your v naught s would have been something like this a some zero is there and you have a pole at t goes to zero not t goes to zero you have a pole at omega goes to zero okay so what is this this is the second order circuit right second order right because there are two poles now if you had been collecting the current here if you were writing the expression of current what would be the order of the circuit at the same capacitor at some capacitor at some capacitor here this is some capacitor and you are collecting your output and this is the expression of output now okay and in the same capacitor you are collecting your current so what will be the expression of current i note s that would be c s a s z1 upon s into s p1 v in s simply s to s would have been cancelled the order would have become first order are you getting my point you are collecting your output at the same point at the same capacitor first you are collecting voltage output now you are collecting current output in case of voltage output your order was second but in case of current output your order is first why so because a zero and a pole at omega equals to zero are getting cancelled are you getting my point so whenever you are saying that circuit is second order with respect to the voltage you can't say the circuit will be second order for current as well why you can't say that because you need to check if you are having a zero at omega goes to if you are having a pole at omega goes to zero or not because the current will add up a zero at omega goes to zero did you understand the point what the point that i wanted to deliver here the current will add up a zero at omega equals to zero 
so when you are writing the voltage just make sure that if you are having a pole at omega equals to 0 if you are having a pole at omega equals to 0 and you are saying that your circuit is second order then when you go to the current there would be a zero at omega equals to zero so that pole and zero will get cancelled and effectively your order will become first order circuit okay so directly you can't say that if my voltage is second order my current would also be second order you have to check okay but if my voltage is first order and i am not having a pole at omega equals to zero my current would be surely first order here you had pole at 1 by r c1 plus c2 right minus 1 by r c1 plus c2 so there you you had your pole so this is not the pole at omega equals to 0 right this is a pole at a some some value so that's why the order didn't change are you getting my point now let's let's just go to third this is the third circuit we have studied now let's just go to this circuit So what what you, would you do? V L V L one you will give V one voltage independent voltage you are giving V L one you are giving V one voltage. So let's just assume this is V one. So what would be your V L two? That would be V in minus V one, right? This is independent and the other one is dependent. Dependent. You could have given v, v, v2 to this to this and then v, VL1 would have been V in minus V2. Okay. Anything you could have given. So only one effective element. Only one effective storing element. One effective storing element. So that means only one effective storing element that means. Uh, it is first order circuit okay it is first order circuit now the same circuit is there but uh, you are collecting the output current so for voltage it was first order circuit right for voltage it was first order circuit I don't really know where is my zero, where is my pole, anything I don't really know. So I will just write down the expression. Yeah, so I will be having a DC gain, a single pole, right? And a zero as well. I don't know the location of pole, I don't know the location of zero. Okay. So my V naught S will simply be A into SZ1 P upon S. P1 plus 1 into V in S. Now tell me what will be my I naught S? I naught S would be 1 upon LS into V naught S. Right? This would be my I naught S. This is my V naught. What would be my I naught S? That would be 1 upon LS into V naught S. So what is this current is doing? Current adds up a pole adds up a pole at omega equals to 0. So now the current is adding up a pole. So what is happening? Now the order of the circuit will be increased. For voltage it was first order but for current it would be second order. Are you getting my point? So what would be your I naught S? Your I naught S would be A upon LS SZ1 upon s p1 plus 1 this is a second order circuit so for current this is a second order circuit okay so every time whenever they are asking you the order of the circuit what you will do first you will uh, first you will calculate for voltage so you will see that this is the first order circuit for current what you will do you will say that i not s would be 1 upon ls into v not s so now the current is adding up a what is the current is doing? The current is adding up a 0 at omega equals to 0. Sorry, the current is adding up a pole at omega equals to 0. So now there are two poles. So this is a second order circuit. 
now one more thing you have to take care that is you should not have a zero at omega equals to zero in case of voltage output in case of voltage output you should not have a zero at omega equals to zero let us assume your circuit your transfer function for voltage was something like this as upon s p1 plus 1 now what would be for current into some vns what would be what it would be for current 1 upon ls into as upon sp1 plus 1 into vns so this s and s would have been cancelled this is first order right and this would have been also first order so you always need to check one thing that in case of voltage output i should not have a zero at omega equals to zero okay in case of inductor and in case of capacitor what you were doing we will take this example okay and in case of capacitor what you were calculating you were seeing that in case of voltage i should not have a pole at omega equals to zero if i am having a pole at omega equals to zero my current will cancel that pole so my current will cancel that pole so effectively my order will be reduced okay so smartly you need to check for voltage you can check it is a very simple method but for writing while writing for the uh, while writing for the current you surely need to check what is the location of pole in case of capacitor you need to check the location of pole and in case of inductor you need to check the location of zero are you getting my point now let's just take another example it will be more clear to you okay so this is a very simple circuit simple rl circuit this very simple rl circuit let's just take this very simple rl circuit so what is v not s by v ns for this we will calculate for voltage and for current as well so if you give v1 voltage to induct uh, or you don't need to give v1 voltage because you can al already see that there is only one effective element so this would be first order circuit right you already know this is a first order circuit so what will be your uh, why then what will be your v not s by v ns that would be ls upon r plus ls right ls upon r plus ls so v not s would be ls upon r plus ls into v ns you are having a zero at omega equals to zero now what will happen to current circuit f and g all together now what will be your current now this is a first order circuit current would be 1 upon ls into into v not s right now someone will say this is already a first order circuit and this is adding up a zero what i am saying this is already a first order circuit and this is adding up a pole adding up another pole at omega equals to zero so effectively this is second order but this is wrong why why is it wrong because this v not s is also having v not s is having a zero at omega equals to zero so there is pole zero cancellation there is pole zero cancellation are you getting my point so what will be your i not s here your i not s was 1 upon ls into v not s your v not s was 1 upon ls into ls upon r plus ls so your i not s r plus ls into v n s So your i not s would have been one upon r plus ls v n s. So that means it is a first order circuit. So for current and for voltage, the order is same. Why is it same? Because there is pole zero cancellation. Okay. So that's why I took this example. Like this is a very easy example. You will think why why am I taking this example? 
बिकॉज एवरी वन नोज दैट फॉर वोल्टेज एंड फॉर बोथ करंट द सर्किट इज फर्स्ट ऑर्डर बट रीजन इज दैट दैट देर इज ए पोल जीरो कैंसिलेशन हेयर फॉर वोल्टेज फॉर वोल्टेज इज इट वॉज फर्स्ट ऑर्डर बट फॉर करंट इट वॉज सेकेंड ऑर्डर आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट फॉर करंट इट वॉज सेकेंड ऑर्डर सो यू कॉन्ट राइट दैट एक्सपोनशियल इक्वेशन फॉर करंट हेयर बिकॉज दैट इज दिस इज अ सेकंड ऑर्डर सर्किट बट इन केस ऑफ वोल्टेज यू कैन राइट दैट एक्सपोनशियल इक्वेशन बिकॉज दिस इज अ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर सर्किट इन केस ऑफ वोल्टेज ओके एंड दिस दिस वॉज फॉर दिस एंड हेयर फॉर वोल्टेज एंड करंट फॉर बोथ इट इट वॉज फर्स्ट ऑर्डर बट इफ आई कैन थिंक ऑफ एनी एग्जाम्पल आई विल ट्राई टू थिंक इफ आई कैन थिंक ऑफ एनी एग्जाम्पल वेयर आई हैव वेर आई हैव पोल एट ओमेगा इक्वस टू जीरो देन द थिंग्स वुड चेंज वेयर आई हैव ए पोल एट ओमेगा इक्वस टू जीरो सो दिस काइंड ऑफ ट्रांसफर फंक्शन विथ सर्किट विल गिव मी दिस काइंड ऑफ ट्रांसफर फंक्शन आई नीड टू थिंक विथ सर्किट विल गिव मी एंड इफ आई थिंक आई विल एड अप इन द वीडियो सो लेट मी थिंक फर्स्ट ओके या सो एक्चुअली आई ट्राइड थिंकिंग अबाउट द सर्किट बट आई कूडेंट गेट एनी ओके आई ट्राइड मल्टीपल आर सी सर्किट्स बट इट्स रियली टफ टू मेक अ पोल एट ओमेगा गोज टू जीरो ओके नॉट टफ लाइक लाइक आई शूडेंट से इट इज टफ बट आई आई थिंक इट इज इम्पॉसिबल ओके इफ एनी वन हैज अनदर आइडिया ही कैन कॉन्टैक्ट मी ऑन लिंक डिन और टेलीग्राम तो लुक वट डू आई वॉन्ट एक्चुअली आई वॉन्ट अ ट्रांसफर फंक्शन लाइक दिस राइट आई वॉन्ट अ ट्रांसफर फंक्शन लाइक दिस दिस इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट राइट now if my input is uh if my input is a step function so what would happen it will give me something like this input is some v okay v by s so s square so this would give me a there would be one exponential and one ramp so like the response would be the response would be unstable because this will give me a ramp response right this will give me a ramp s square will give me a ramp response are you getting my point do you understand what i am trying to deliver here the response will be ramp so i don't think there is a uh, possibility to make the circuit okay what do i really want i want an rc circuit that is having A pole at omega equals to zero. So, if you can think of the circuit, please do let me know. Okay, on LinkedIn or Telegram. Okay. So, the concept that I wanted to deliver in this uh, lecture uh, that has been delivered, I and I hope you have understood it, right? So, I just try to deliver the conclusion is that if you know the uh, if you know the uh, order of the circuit for voltage output, it knows. it's not necessary for the current output the order will be same for current output you will have to check okay also you need to keep mind keep in mind the pole at omega goes to zero in case of capacitor and in case of inductor you need to keep in mind the zero at omega goes to zero got it so just revise it once again and it will be all clear to you okay thank you